let's have a look at the basic functionality of the paintbrush tool. The tool can be found here on the Tools panel to the left. In most circumstances, you will want to begin painting onto a new pixel layer. I can create one by using this option on the Layers panel. Or alternatively, I can use Shift Command N on Mac, Shift Control N on Windows. The paintbrush tool defaults to a round brush with moderate edge hardness. As I move the cursor across the document view, I'll see a live preview of what my brush stroke will look like. The brushes panel on the right hand side will allow me to choose from a wide variety of brush shapes and textures. These brushes are separated into categories. As an example, I'll switch to the textures category and select the first grunge pattern brush. Moving back to the document view, the brush nozzle is quite small. I'll use the right square bracket key to gradually increase the brush width. I can now click drag to start brushing onto the new pixel layer I created earlier. I'll add some textured brush strokes to the right and to the left here. If you make a mistake or simply want to remove the brush strokes quickly, you can undo with Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows. Rather than paint with black, I might want to use some of the existing colors in this composition. I can quickly switch to a color picker by holding Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, then click dragging on the document view. I'll release the mouse button over this red pixel to sample from it. If I start painting, the paintbrush tool will now use this color instead of black. I can repeat this process for the blue color over here. I'll sample from it, then start brushing on the left to paint with that new color. You may notice that the brush has a red highlight box around it with a red circle. This informs me that the brush properties have been modified from their default values. This is because I changed the brush width, making it larger. I can right click on the brush to see several options. If I wanted to commit any changes permanently to the brush, I could choose Update Brush. Alternatively, I could choose Reset Brush, and it will return to its default settings. The Paintbrush tool can also be used for non-destructive dodging and burning. With this image, I'll add a new pixel layer, and use B to select the Paintbrush tool. I actually still have that textured brush selected whereas I want a basic round brush for this type of painting. I'll go to the Brushes panel, switch to the Masking category, and select a mid-sized, soft, round brush. Back on the Layers panel, I'll change this Pixel Layers Blend Mode to Overlay, and bring its opacity down to around 25%. With my brush set to Pure White, which I can check over here, I can now paint onto areas of the image to brighten them. To darken areas, I want to change my brush color to black. On the Tools panel, I can click on the background or secondary color to swap to it. Alternatively, I can use X on the keyboard to quickly switch between my primary and secondary colors. Now that I have black as my active color, I can paint into the sky area to darken it, using the right square bracket key to increase the brush width so I can quickly cover larger areas. Hiding and showing this pixel layer reveals that a quick application of brushwork with a suitable blend mode can produce a dramatic difference in the tonal balance of the image. The paint brush tool can also be used for creative masking workflows. In my layer stack here, I have a paper overlay texture which I will select and show. I want to blend through most of the original image and have this paper texture displayed as a border. To achieve this, I'll add a mask layer to this paper texture layer, then select the paintbrush tool. And I'll go back to the brushes panel, navigate to the textures category, and pick this grunge pattern brush again. Making sure my active color is set to black, I can now paint into the center of the mask to subtract from it. I'll increase my brush width while I'm brushing. This reveals the image beneath. 
I now have this creative effect where the paper texture is rendering at the edges of the image. Here is a useful technique. On the Layers panel, I can Option click on Mac, Alt click on Windows, over the mask thumbnail to solo it. This temporarily isolates the mask layer as a grayscale representation, and it helps to highlight areas around the center I may have missed, so I'll paint these black. To exit solo mode, I can Option or Alt click on the mask thumbnail again. Finally, the paintbrush tool can be used with adjustment and live filter layers to apply their effects selectively. With this image, I'll add an HSL adjustment, and I'll drag the saturation shift slider to the left, so the image is almost monochromatic. I'll then close the dialog, and select the paintbrush tool with B. As I'm still using a textured brush nozzle, I'll want to switch to a soft round brush again on the masking category. With my active color, set to black, I'll then paint directly onto the adjustment layer. This will reveal the color detail below, because I'm subtracting from the mask, so the desaturation effect is no longer being applied to these areas. Alongside the adjustment thumbnail, a mask thumbnail has now become visible, illustrating where the effect of the adjustment will be shown and hidden. And there we go, a quick look at the paintbrush tool and some example use cases. I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.